I'm going through so much of just making sure that I'm being transparent enough, that I'm, uh, that I'm being mindful of their feelings, because um, I know this is a, it's a very, very sensitive topic. Because once you show your face, there's no going back. Uh, so right now I'm going over the um, boudoir shoots from yesterday with Violette and Vivian. So I've just been going through the selection process and uh, seeing which ones I'm going to send to them. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> the boobs like, touching other boobs. It's when you prep for them to come on both of your tits. These kind of photos, these are to create revenue for them. So these are ones that are going to be fulfilling more of a fantasy. Listen here. <laughs> I've always had a lot of friends in the industry. One of my girlfriends, she asked if I would do a shoot for her. And so I did, and so she posted them, and it got a really great reaction. And then soon I had other people. It just quickly grew into this, this business for me, uh, which I love. Yeah, I just want to see like all that butt. That is a big butt, okay. Her very first paid client was a plus size girl, which is something that like a lot of photographers in the industry, they don't really know how to accentuate like our natural beauty because it's so common for everyone to be like what we call spinners or because like you can spin them on your dick because they're so tiny. <laughs> Give me that like, I'm gonna suck your dick look. Mm, yeah. In my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I just love how she makes everyone look beautiful. And I also really trust her as a photographer because she's female. All right, so, okay, I'll, I'll let you guys do your thing. Cheers, everyone. I'm friends with so many sex workers and I see the stigmas that they face from outside of the sex worker community. I've been collecting stock images. I've been, when I've been researching articles, a lot of them use the same one even. It's this faceless woman leaning into a car. Though there are people that do that, we don't all do that. There's more than just that sort of archetype of an escort. Like that's, like with me, like I walk down the street, people don't even realize. How can you tell? Well, you, you can't. There's no way of just looking at someone and, and knowing they're a sex worker. Uh, they would just like look like someone like me. Yeah, bite that lip. Some of us have family, yeah, like, some of us have kids. Yeah. Like, I have my two little <laughs> idiot dogs that <laughs> like to be part of everything. Are you gonna get it? Are you gonna get it? Hey, buddy. I've always had this idea rolling around in my head for a long time about how can I show sex workers as people? And then I thought like, well, what better way of just showing them in their home? So the goal of the, uh, the Home Lives of Sex Workers project is to help shift the public's perception of what it means to be a sex worker. I feel like it's so important for the world to see that these are real people and they are doing a real job. I would say one of my favorite ones is definitely uh, Vivian. When you look at it, you don't really know what's happening and it, it raises a lot of questions. Who are they? How do they know each other? There's a lot of little things planted in there that tells a story. The book that she's reading, the fact that she's vaping, um, the art that's on the wall, um, it really speaks to who she is. That's the great thing about a photo is that it starts a conversation. I really want to show all of it. I want to show people who love what they do and are super successful, and I want to show people who've done survival sex work. When I started doing the Home Lives Project, so the people that I reached out to first were, were my friends, and then from there, I would go outside my social circle. And then, uh, and one of you, if that's okay. Okay, yeah, sure. What I'm doing is I go into the place. I'm observing how they live. I'm observing like how they present themselves. Because a lot of these people are people I'm, I'm meeting for the first time when I walk in the door. I mean, I feel as though it humanizes sex workers because it kind of gives a perspective that clients or anyone else outside of that whole hobbyist community would be able to see. Cleaning? You clean? I clean. I have invested so much of not only my time, I've invested my own money 
like happily, like I care about it. I'm doing it because this is such an important issue to me. It's about trying to have the public see sex workers for what they are, real people. So yeah, do you have like um, a difference of how you present yourself online to how you present yourself in your day-to-day -day life? Oh yeah, I'm a very ordinary person. I don't uh, take guitar lessons and rock climb and like travel halfway across the world. I just watch Netflix and I go grocery shopping and sometimes I go to the gym and I cuddle with my boyfriend and I sleep. Okay. That, that's what I do. What is the most uh, important aspect to marketing for you? Um, I would say good photos. The boudoir shoot was for advertising purposes. Hopefully I'll put it on my website. It's so important to put a face to a sex worker. If society could see that, then perhaps they could see them as people and people deserve to have rights and people deserve to be able to do their job safely. But there is such a large population of sex workers that do not show their face. Perfect. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. What made you want to show your face? I guess it was just like a stance that I took. I was willing to take the risk. When I came out to my family about what I did, my mother still had a lot of stigma-fueled misconceptions about sex work, and yeah, she thought I was being coerced or manipulated into doing this, um, when in actuality, I did a lot of research into the industry before I started. Kind of part your lips a little bit. I totally understand why some women wouldn't show their faces, but I feel like change starts at the individual level. If I'm in a privileged spot where I don't risk losing too much, I should, I should do it. I do acknowledge that it's usually white sex workers that are out more so than sex workers of color, but the sex worker community is very diverse. And I am struggling of finding sex workers of color who will show their face. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so this, if that's okay. So thank you so much for like reaching out to me. What made you want to participate? These clearly were taken with a lot of respect for the people involved. Oh, so you. I was just like, who is this person? This feels like really you. I'm seeing your books. I'm seeing your record player, your little knickknacks, and uh, you and your book. Singing. I've done a wide variety of sex work. Most recently, done like escorting. I've been doing porn sort of on and off for the last 10 years, right? So I think as soon as um, my partner and I sort of had the discussion that we wanted to try to have a, a baby. Because you're I'm pregnant, pregnant now. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. But um, we, I sort of felt more comfortable just sort of stopping in terms of um, a lot of the escorting. You know, I don't feel like I have to hustle as hard at this per point in my life. Okay. Like I can actually sort of take a break. And again, I have a lot of privilege in some, a lot of ways to say this, but if somebody was like, hey, man, you've done like fat porn or you're, you're like uh, like a whore and you have sex. It's like you're just sort of stating facts at this <laughs> yes, point. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I, you have sex, so don't we all? And some people are gonna are very like, how could you do this? But that's their problem. Mm -hmm. And I think that to use the privilege and the space that I have to sort of speak up, you know, what I mean? and I'm gonna do that, especially as a person of color. And see, can you see the future for me as an older person? Yeah, <laughs> it's all, it all makes sense. When people are marginalized by class or race, especially racialized folks, like there's the extra pressure that you know positions many of us as um, you know either hypersexual or of having a deviant sexuality, of being immoral already. You know, there are sort of a lot of intersections and layers around the stigma. It's not just the work, but how you're framed within the work. I think I've seen some comments saying like, oh, I wonder if that person knew what the photo was being used for. The people who are in the project, they're in it because they really care about this issue. They want to have a say in how their, this industry is represented. Having their trust is so important to me. Like if the public doesn't like what I'm doing, that's okay. I'm not doing this to make everyone happy. I'm doing this as a thank you for the sex worker community. So it's their feedback that matters so much to me. It's impossible to change everyone's minds, but if I can change some people, or at least have them have an honest look at it, 
then it's successful. Yay, Thank you so much.